The first thing to make is the axis of the rotor. Take a wood dowel and cut a piece of 8 to 9 centimeters in length. Then, using a drill bit of around 1 millimeter in diameter, make a hole in the center of the dowel. The hole must go at about 1 centimeter in depth in the wood dowel. Make the hole in both sides. Now, from a wood stick like this, cut two pieces of 25 millimeters in length and 10 millimeters in width and glue them to the wood dowel in this way. At a distance of 20 millimeters from one of the ends. Okay, you should get something like this. Now, using a larger wood stick, cut two pieces of 18 millimeters inside and glue them in this way, centered on this part. Our rotor is almost ready. We now have to put the coils. I'm going to use magnet wire size 28 AWG. Lead some 15 centimeters free and wind one coil at one of the sides. Wind between 50 and 100 turns of magnet wire. After you finish the first coil, move to the other side and continue winding in the same direction. Wind the same number of turns as you did in the first coil. Now we have to make the commutator using the two wires coming from the coils. Remember that you have to remove the varnish from the magnet wire in order to make electrical contact. Take the wires and bend it in this way. And using tape, we will fix them to the axis. Use tape and put it around the axis. Do the same with the other wire. The rotor is ready. Notice that the two wires are not aligned with the plane of the coils, but they are at an angle of between 20 and 30 degrees. We need a stand for the rotor and I'm going to use a paper clip, bend it in this way. You have to put it as straight as you can. and then bend it again at 90 degrees. And do it again on the upper side. So we can put the rotor like this and we will use another clip in the other side and the rotor can move freely. So the rotor is in place. I have used electrical tape to fix the clips to a wooden base. The next step is to install a couple of brushes to make contact with the commutator. This is nothing more than another pair of paper clips. So in this way, we make contact with the commutators. 
and we will put the supply voltage at these two points. The final step is to add two magnets. The magnets should be aligned with the rotor at the same height. And our motor is ready for work. Let's test it. The motor can work with a single magnet, but of course at a lower power, because the magnetic field is weaker. Let me explain how the motor works. Remember that when a current flows through a coil, it becomes an electromagnet. When the rotor is in this position, there is no contact and no current flows. When it rotates and is in this position, we have electrical contact. If the connections are in the right polarity, we will have the same magnetic pole here and in the magnet, and there will be a repulsion force that pushes the rotor in this way. The rotor moves and there is no contact when it moves, but it has an inertia that makes it continue to rotate until it moves again to the same position and we have another push that makes the rotor move. At the other side we have the same effect but the force is upwards. So we have two forces on the rotor one that pushes down here and other that pushes up and this generates a torque that makes the rotor to rotate continuously.